All right, this is James here again with El Paso English Cafe. This is part three of language filter, going on longer than I expected and also interrupted more than I expected. Okay, so what have I gone through so far? Um, Spanish, the, the language you're learning influences the way you speak a language, excuse me, the language you begin with influences the way you speak a language you're learning. The language you are, that you come with um, influences the way you perceive another language that you're learning, okay? So I have many, many Spanish speakers who are learning English, okay? I gave the example of me learning a Turkish word. And what did I have to do? To learn a Turkish word, I needed to suppress some of my um, associations with certain letters that I have from knowing English, and I had to build a new association, okay? And Spanish uh, speakers who come to English, yes, they have an association with letters, okay? They have an association with the letter O, which says to them, O, okay? Right, sometimes, it's, it's true, sometimes the, the correct interpretation or the, the, the best approximation of this O sound is O, a little different in English, O, right? We talked about that earlier. Okay, so yes, it's a good approximation, a great approximation, some of the time. However, other times, it's not the best interpretation, okay? It's not the closest approximation. Um, I take these as opportunities to teach my students closer approximations and also to build the categories of perception the categories of perception and the categories of expression, okay? The category, the vowel categories. Spanish speakers come with five um, vowel sounds. English has 12, okay? At some point, it's very useful to indicate to the student the situation rather than, I mean, what is teaching? Teaching is taking things that, that a student may or may not already grasp and making them easier to grasp. Okay, um, I, I see a lot of, I don't know, the word is avoidance. I see just, well, you know, the student will get that on their own. Yeah, a lot of people learn the whole language on their own. Why teach at all, okay? So this is my, this is my niche. This is what I love doing uh, with a, a English teaching. Okay, so here we've got, um, here we've got, now the phrase, modern mother. All right, this filter also works um, with, with grammar. Spanish grammar says adjective, wait, noun first, then adjective. Spanish says adjective, then noun. English goes, I, I'm confusing you. Okay, Spanish says noun, then adjective. English typically is adjective, then noun. All right, so that's another complication. Here we've got two words that look different, but from the Spanish speaker's point of view, they, they seem very, very similar, very, very similar. Okay, so I, I help them distinguish these two, both in their perception and in their, their speaking. Modern, yes, use sound number six with this O. Modern, er. Now the, the whole er, the whole er, th this can be interpreted as er from a Spanish speaker. Yes, they need to develop the category of er. Okay, modern, and then put that N on there, modern, okay? Yes, the, your English speakers are, are waiting, are expecting this, this sound. If you don't put the this, this sound there, the, the, the English listener starts to go through the repertoire of words looking for something that matches more closely. They may not, they may not perceive modern if, if the N is missing. Okay, mother, the D needs to pronounce, the D needs to be placed in the mouth behind the teeth. The Spanish uh, pronunciation of D is with the tongue on the teeth or, or even coming out. Very similar to this TH right here. So you've got all these levels of complication. Um, you know, I, I find it, I, I, get, uh, I get a big kick out of taking a person for whom modern mother was hugely confusing and, and bringing them to the point where modern mother is not, e or is not difficult anymore. Modern mother, ah, uh, ah, uh, modern mother. In this case, now, now this category 
this category gains reality. This category gains, um, it becomes applicable. It becomes, it becomes useful, okay? As long as, you know, a Spanish speaker can start with, with five approximations and make a lot of progress in English. However, there is going to come a point where this will be very limiting, okay? Here is one of those cases where their perception and their speaking is limited by the lack of this category. Um, so I take these as opportunities to create this category. Now they, they, they take this category seriously because they could not say modern mother. They could not perceive modern mother without this category. Now they have category 12. Aha, yes, I needed to say mother because it's different from modern. Modern mother. Okay. That, that's, that's hugely significant. I, I can't I don't know, I can't express how significant that seems to me, is creating this category. And, and the student will either do it on their own or, or with assistance from the teacher. As long as I'm there, I'm going to assist. Okay, let me show you another case where it's uh, quite, quite fun. Okay, costume, custom, costume, custom. These words are only distinguished by the vowel sounds. And my, my students have a devil of a time distinguishing them when, when they're hearing them. What was that? What was that? Was it costume or custom? And I'll say, okay, here you go. Ah, costume. This is six. Oh, remember in modern it was also six? Oh, yes. In costume, it's six. Sometimes I'll eliminate everything except the vowel sound. I'll say, look, this is ah, ooh. This is a, uh, a, uh. okay? Then it becomes quite clear how important the vowel categories are, okay? Distinguishing the vowels. So we've got costume, a, uh, u. And these happen to be two sounds that exist for Spanish speakers from Spanish. A, uh, u, okay? Costume. Custom. Here's category 12. It's not a mispronunciation. It's not laziness on the part of the English speaker. Oh, look, the English speaker didn't, didn't distinguish between this U and this O. They, they give them the same value. Yeah, that's how English is. It is that way from the bottom to the top, uh, president down to whoever else. Everybody is going to say, costume, distinguishing these two vowels, and custom with these two vowels essentially the same. Okay? More emphasis here, less emphasis there. Custom. Costume, custom. Teacher, how do we do that? Okay. Uh, uh. What do you mean, uh, uh? Ah, uh, ah? Uh? No, no, no. Ah uh is for costume. This one is not ka as well. It's ka. Oh. And then the student begins to work on a category 12 until there is something like costume, custom, or modern mother. Until that kind of difficulty is encountered, the student is, what, perfectly rational to choose not to develop these pain in the ass. 12 categories? No, man, I have five. I'm using the five I have. Why develop them? Oh, here's a reason to develop them. The reason is you have a very difficult time distinguishing, distinguishing costume from custom when you don't have a category. You don't have a perception of sound number 12. All right, that was very exciting for me. Um, Give me your feedback. What do you think? Thank you very much for coming to El Paso English Cafe. Please come again.